to transplant your seedlings use a spoon dig out as much soil with it you including the roots of the plant and hold the leaves of the plant and not the stem to pull it out because this can squeeze and damage the water and food conducting tubes that is xylem and phloem and the plant can die loosen up your roots when you remove the root ball from for repotting loosen up or free up some roots at the bottom and also at the sides Use a magnifying glass to closely examine and diagnose your plant pests and insects to identify them and follow the treatment accordingly. Help your root bound plants by root pruning or repotting them in larger pots. Create a no stick shovel or any garden tool. Spray paint your garden shovel or any garden tool to protect it from rust and keep it clean. protect plants during transport from a nursery use your home aluminum ladder like the batla and place your pots tightly in the ladder compartments if you detect iron deficiency in your plant that is called iron chlorosis and if you see pale colored leaves instead of the dark green ones you can bury some iron nails around your plant you can do perfect seed spacing for tiny seeds like spreading them apart in a row on toilet paper for better visibility and even spacing and sewing well you can make even seed tapes either in a row or even a square or a round seed board especially for carrot seeds for even spacing and for better growth and ease of harvesting you can use candy sticks or even larger pebbles or even broken pot pieces as markers for your plants and seedlings you can make your own plastic bottle slow water feeding for your plants easiest one is make some small holes in the cork and invert the bottom and insert into the soil picture perfect seed storage organize unplanted or leftover seeds in the sleeves of an old photo album best use of tissue paper cardboard roll is to make seedling cups which are biodegradable and these also can be directly planted into the soil without disturbing the roots build your own garden trellis using pvc pipes or even wooden sticks or even bamboo sticks if you have water shortage collect rain water for your plants For this you can either collect rainwater flowing out of from your terrace into the drain pipes or you can install or build a dedicated rainwater collecting system. Use plastic bins or containers as mini greenhouses or polyhouses for faster seed germinations. Sprinkle epsom salt or baking soda directly on slugs and snails to kill them and also rearing chicken which love to feed on these insect insects is another good idea if you're interested. In winter to protect from frost cover the plants at night with an empty pot or even with a polythene shopping bag Do not throw away pencil shavings from your kids use them for mulching which also prevents weed growth and repels insects Garden vegetables that become overripe are an easy target for pests remove them as soon as possible to avoid infection Insects cannot stand plants such as garlic, onions, chives and chrysanthemums. Grow these plants around the garden to help repel insects. Add used tea waste or coffee grounds into your compost bin for faster composting because earthworms digest them very fast. You can also use tea waste or coffee grounds on flowering plants as an organic fertilizer to boost the blooms. healthy soil means healthy plants that are better able to resist pests and diseases and using neem cake biomix in soil to get rid of many plant diseases is a very good idea and also it is a fertilizer and nourishes your plants seal the injured end of your plant stem after pruning or the top end of your plant cutting during the process of cloning by just pouring one or two drops of wax from your burning candle this will prevent moisture evaporation and results are better and also it helps as a sealant for microbes and fungi watering seeds and seedlings carefully is very important and watering with the regular garden can can displace the seeds and damage the seedlings resulting in bad outcome best way to water them is use a tray under the pot whenever there is water requirement it uptakes it through the drainage holes 
Use sandpaper to scrape the hard seed cover of certain seeds like apple, chiku and those with hard seed cover for faster seed germination. Vertical garden and safe space. Simplest of this is by using some taut strings on a wall and hang some vertical pots with hooks. If you do not have these pots, you can also make your own using scrap like plastic bottles. You can also use your fence mesh like this one and hang pots to build a vertical garden. You can use these uh, plastic bottles to make simple planters for sowing seeds or planting small plants. You will make a simple self watering pot or automatic watering system using a cotton wick and cutting the bottles as shown here. The lower end of the wick should be placed in the water reservoir, that is the lower portion of the plastic bottle. Make a hole in the bottle cap and insert the cotton wick through it. And the upper portion of the bottle can be inverted with the potting mix and plant inside it. Whenever the soil gets dry, it will suck the water through the string and then provide the automatic watering system. Make your own seedling watering can. Use a bottle, you can make this in two ways. First by popping out a nozzle by heating the cap. This really works great to water your succulents because spilling water directly on succulents like Havertheas can be dangerous to the plants. Another way is to make a simple bottle shower by making multiple tiny holes in the cap and offers the shower effect to your small plants. Mark your garden gloves with inches or centimeters to evenly plant your seeds or seedlings. And similarly, if your garden is bigger, you can use a long stick and mark the measurements for the same purpose like if you're planting it in a raised bed garden or large space gardening. How to know if my seeds are healthy or unhealthy? First thing you should see is before purchase, the packaging date and the best before date. Then pour your seeds in your hand and closely examine them and the first look itself will tell you which seeds are healthy looking and which needs to be discarded. You can test your seeds or even start some seedlings using the toilet paper method. Uh, just sprinkle the seeds on one layer of the toilet paper and put another layer on the top of this and make it moist by spraying water. Place this either in a ziplock bag or any other container and keep it in a warm place and check after 24 to 48 hours for the sprouts. Cut out a plastic bottle and use it as a seedling or small plant protector against any wind blowing away your plant or even uh, protect it from animals and birds. The same can be used as a funnel to transfer your seeds or even potting mix into bags or containers. You can also use old folks from your kitchen and bury them around your seedlings to protect them from animals. It's a good habit to always label your plants and sown seeds. It can really create confusion if you do not label them. You can make your own labels with pop sticks, candy sticks, plastic bottle strips. Uh, larger pebbles, windows, blinds, curtain strips and so on. You can pick small seeds for sowing with a stick or toothpick dipped in water. Before sowing seeds, soak them in lukewarm water for 24 hours, especially for certain seeds like beans, peas, okra and others. Seed soaking is using Epsom salt solution for soaking like use one teaspoon in 100 ml of water and soak the seeds in it. This results in faster germination and healthy seedlings. You can also spray Epsom salt solution on your seeds and seedlings for healthy outcome. Make your own trouble with a plastic bottle. By cutting any used plastic bottle like I'm showing you here, try to take a harder bottle for making this. You can use the same as a funnel to even transfer your potting mix or seeds and things like that. Then egg trays can be used as germination seed trays. Either the cardboard ones or if you are using plastic egg storage container, you need to make few drainage holes in it. You can also make seed pots by rolling newspaper and even this is biodegradable. And similarly, you can directly transplant them into a soil or even a large container. Tidbits or tic-tac containers. They are small containers. You can use them 
to preserve your seeds like leftover seeds into this and once baby seedlings come out of the seeds gradually introduce them to sunlight once the leaves are out like one hour a day for three days two hours a day for few more days and then gradually to full sunlight this process is called hardening off use a seedling heat mat or a heat source from a high watt bulb this can help you create a spring like atmosphere for your seeds or uh, for better germination and faster germination scrape your nails into a soap before working with your garden soil or potting mix if you do not want to use garden gloves this helps in cleaning your hands easily later on and also the dirt won't enter into your nail beds make a cello trap tape Wrap the cello tape in reverse on your fingers and use the sticky part to touch on the leaves infested with pests like aphids and white flies. Use dirty aquarium water to fertilize your plants. When you are performing a periodic cleanup, do not throw away the water and the filter waste. Just pour small amounts of it to your plants. It contains helpful bacteria and some trace nutrients that can really help your plants. Similarly, use cooking water to fertilize your garden. When you boil or steam some vegetables, do not pour the water into the drain. Instead, once the water has cooled, water your plants with it. It contains many essential nutrients for your plants. Sprinkle fine cinnamon powder on your seeds and seedlings to protect seeds and seedlings from rot. For acid-loving plants like azaleas and roses, use alum 5 grams in 500 ml of water once every 10 days and this will really boost the growth and flowering. Remove clay-rich soil using a simple hack. When you bring your plant from a nursery and start repotting, most often you find they have stuffed the plant in a clay-rich sticky soil. You can remove this soil without damaging the roots by soaking the root ball in water for few minutes till the soil dissolves. Then you can repot this plant into a well draining potting mix. Forget to water this newly repotted plant with Epsom salt, about 1 teaspoon in 1 litre of water to counter transplant shock. Use this universal organic formula to deter most rodents and animals from your garden and even pests. If you have already experienced rodent and animal attacks on your garden, you will realize the importance of this uh, tip. Add one and a half teaspoon of chili powder to one liter of water. Plus, add three to four drops of liquid dish soap to help the spray adhere to the surfaces of the plant. Then, to make it more potent, add one or two pieces of crushed garlic, or even you can add paste, garlic paste. Plus, you can add some uh, crushed chopped onion pieces. Mix it thoroughly well, and then leave it for 24 hours. Then use this solution to spray on your plants, but do a patch test on your leaf first and check whether the leaf is wilting if it is too strong. If it is so, then you can dil dilute this accordingly and use it on your plants safely. Another simplest way to repel some animals like cats, dogs and uh, rabbits is to soak a some pieces of cloth with vinegar, white vinegar and stuff them in some areas of your garden. These animals cannot withstand the smell of vinegar and may not return back if you repeat this process for a few days. To promote more blooms and growth of your flowering plants, do not hesitate to perform these three tasks. Pinching, that is cutting the growing tips of stems and branches to promote more branching. Number two, deadheading, that is removing the dried or drying flowers along with the twig from your plant. Then number three, pruning, this helps promote more growth and makes the plant more bushy then if you do not have any chemical rooting hormone or powder that is the indoor butyric acid you can dip your cuttings in honey cinnamon powder fresh aloe vera gel and even your saliva or spit discover a free seed germination station that is the top of your refrigerator you can place your seed trays on top of a refrigerator to get the heat and produce faster germination of your seeds easy method to check viability of your seeds just pour them in a bowl of water and if the seeds are floating this means they are dry and not viable discard them and use only those seeds that sink to the bottom you can use silica gel packets, which I'm sure most of us have seen these packets. Instead of throwing these tiny sachets, use them for your seed storage containers as desiccants, which can increase your seed life and protect them from fungus. 
Similarly, silica gel packets can be used to preserve powdered gardening stuff like bone meal, fungicide powder, rooting hormones and so on. Just tape the sachet to the underside of the container's lid and that's it. Use 3% hydrogen peroxide solution 5 ml in 1 liter of water and spray on the seeds once every 2 to 3 days to get fast germination and healthier seedlings. You can also use a mixture of 1 part hydrogen peroxide to 32 parts water to improve your plant's root system by watering it with this solution weekly once. Humidity tray by using small pebbles installed in a large tray surrounding the plant and pour some water into the tray. This really helps to maintain humidity levels and helps your plants to grow. If you do not have perlite or vermiculite, you can also use red brick powdered. This helps to make a well draining soil. Do not throw away kitchen leftovers, grow plants from leftovers that is veggies and fruits like onions, pineapples and so on. Lighten the weight of your pot. Use pieces of packaging foam or even thermocol pieces at the bottom layer of the container and mix lot of coco peat or peat moss and even you can add perlite into the mix to make it lighter. Now about the universal organic pesticide. In 1 liter of water mix 1 teaspoon chili powder that is red chili powder, 2 to 3 pieces of crushed garlic plus some onion chops and also you can add some aloe vera gel plus add 5 drops of liquid dishwash soap which acts as a surfactant and spray this weekly twice on the affected plants to kill aphids, mealybugs, white flies and other pests. This also deters some animals and rodents. Use liquid dishwash soap in any pesticide you make. This acts as a surfactant and helps in coating on the plant's leaves and branches. You can also use any hand wash liquid soap or any soap solution for this. Use unwanted or old plastic forks or plastic spoons to label your plants. That is mark your plants if you do not have professional markers. Use certain herbs like citronella, catnip, basils, marigolds, eucalyptus and many other plants to deter mosquitoes. You can watch my separate video on a big list of mosquito repelling plants from the link in the description and also from a link here at top right corner of this video. Do not throw away banana peels, bury them around flowering plants into the soil to provide the potassium content to the plants and improve flowering and overall plant health. Grow sweet tomatoes using baking soda. Sprinkle baking soda around your plant soil which counteracts the acidity and yields sweet tomatoes. Do not throw away your broken umbrellas. You can make a garden trellis with the umbrella frame to support your plants. Tobacco is an age-old natural organic pesticide for aphids, white flies, spider mites, leaf miners and many other worms like slugs and caterpillars. If tobacco or tobacco leaves are not available, you can use this hack. If you are a smoker or anyone in your family or friends, you can make a cheapest tobacco pesticide spray for your plants from leftover cigarette buds. To prepare this nicotine pesticide spray, take half a cup of used cigarette buds and add this to 1 litre of water. Mix well and even crush if necessary and then leave this for 1 hour. Then strain out and discard the solid stuff. Take the liquid portion and optionally add few drops of some dishwash liquid soap and also 1 teaspoon of garlic paste into this to make it more potent. Then load this into your spray bottle and use it on the affected plants. Repeat this after a week if necessary or use it in conjunction with neem oil spray alternately if you wish. One point to note is, tobacco spray is natural but still dangerous to beneficial insects of your garden. These spray for your plants. Add one or two handful of compost like vermicompost or decomposed cow dung powder or both together per litre of water and allow this to brew for 3 days before using. Make sure you stir it deeply few times every day to add the oxygen into it which is very important for final outcome. Then finally, strain out the liquid using a cloth and your compost tea is ready. To use this as a foliar spray and to water your plants, dilute it further like 1 is to 10 ratio and use once every 15 days. And spray in the early morning hours when the leaf stomata are open for best results. 
Soaking flower bulbs in dilute compost tea before planting them speeds up germination time by providing them extra energy boost from compost. Soak for about maximum 6 to 12 hours, not more than that. Lighten up your pots by filling the bottoms with peanut shells and similar stuff like this, especially if your pots are more deeper. You can make a partition to this layer and the soil by placing a piece of cloth or even a, uh, some leftover green net pieces and then pour your potting mix on this net. You can also use this step for mulching in summer to prevent moisture evaporation. Mulching with seashells Especially if you are staying near coastal areas, they are easily available in plenty. These seashells not only prevent weed growth and mulching benefits, but also provide slow releasing calcium source to the plant over a period of time. This also gives an attractive look to your garden. No wheelbarrow to move your garden stuff? Do not worry. The cheapest alternate is a large cloth or an old bed sheet. Just load on the heavy objects and drag it along. It's actually a child's play as you can see in the video. Then all in one all purpose mixed fertilizer recipe powder to save time. This universal fertilizer contains almost everything your plant needs to grow and produce flowers and fruits. It's a complete plant food to be used once every 15 days or even monthly ones depending on your plant requirement. Watch the complete video on how to make this universal fertilizer mixture from the end screen link in the circle. Please like, share and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel. Happy gardening!